I don't think people understand how a dishwasher really works. And when I got mine, I was absolutely surprised at how effective it is. But what's actually happening inside? I decided to build a completely transparent dishwasher to figure out how it works. Looking ahead, things are much more interesting than they first appeared to be. Let's go! So, we have a whole bunch of dirty dishes. Just imagine how long it would take to wash everything manually. Moreover, it needs to be dried. Sounds like a total waste of time to me. With a dishwasher, I just rinse off the large impurities and load all the dishes into the trays. Now it's all clean. But how exactly does it clean? At first I assumed maybe the magic lay in the detergent. This pill even looks like a super concentrated piece of chemistry that dissolves everything out. So generally there are four dirt removal methods. Mechanical way, simply by scrubbing the dirt away with a sponge or using high water pressure. Chemical way, by using chemistry that disrupts dirt structure at the molecular level. And then simply rinse with water. High temperature, hot water also dissolves dirt. Time, just by letting the dishes soak well. Each of these works great on its own, but a dishwasher combines them and they work together to achieve faster and better cleaning. So, we bought a new dishwasher to rebuild it and see the whole process from the inside. We need to replace the walls with plexiglass wherever possible. Firstly, we need to unscrew side panels. Underneath is black noise insulation. And just below that all the electronic stuff. Later we'll break it down as well. The lid was held on by these springs. Pull out the shelves. Next, we unscrew the guide rails. Now it's time to disassemble the cover. Make sure to save the control panel and detergent tray. Now the machine is fully prepared for the most crucial stage – marking and cutting the metal. Honestly, I feel sorry for this machine, but my curiosity prevails. Look at the lid, it now closes and covers nothing. Let's keep up the enthusiasm and cut further. The main thing was not to cut off some important part. And the whole process took us 2 hours. Now it's no longer a dishwasher, just a frame. Before the next step we vacuumed up all the abrasive dust and washed the surface very thoroughly. We plan to install transparent acrylic material instead of walls. At first I assumed that we wouldn't be able to cut off some of the walls, but we managed to do all five sides. So, we need five of these pieces.
I decided to coat the sheets with some kind of anti-fogging agent for cars. And for gluing we will use a special compound which is a sealant at the same time. Oh, if you only knew how messy we got with that sealant. We should stay accurate to avoid water leaks and we had to use whatever was available to strut the panels. Now we have to let it dry for 24 hours. In reality it took 3 days. After that we cut out the circle and sealed it. Oh, and finally, it's time to start drilling holes for the guide rails and reassembling them in place. Oh, thank goodness those holes match. Keep everything nice and tight. And yeah, we are ready to start. Oh, damn. Looks like we have an unexpected problem. Let's try it now. Yeah, fine. Technically, we're done. But how is the detergent going to get inside now? Basically, we could attach it here, but we found a better solution. When the machine triggers the tray, we will add the tablet manually. Now connect to the water supply and prepare a bucket for drainage. Before actual washing, we should test the whole system. I can hear some water flowing. Wow, how cool is that? And then I felt something splatter on me. Damn, somehow I managed to miss those holes. Definitely needs to be resealed. We had to delay the experiment for another two days in order to seal the tank thoroughly. The first step is to add salt. It softens the water to avoid smudges on the dishes. And finally guys, the main phase of the video. We brought a whole bunch of tableware and started loading them. Look how messy they are. Specifically for this video, we bought something. A 360 camera that allows us to see how the dishes will feel inside. Also an underwater case. I used all my old cameras to see the process from all angles. We chose the longest cycle, 2 hours. The first stage starts with pumping water inside, around 3 liters. The pump turns on to pre-soak the contamination with cold water. The sprinkler has 11 non-symmetrical nozzles, which means water can reach every spot inside, no matter how loaded the machine is. Most of the dirt has already gone. But there is still a long way to go. 10 minutes later, it drains and starts filling a new portion of water. For the second, the longest and most important stage. But this time the heater is turned on along with the pump, slowly increasing the temperature inside to avoid thermal shock and glass breaking. Time to add the tablet. Which works in combination with high heat and time. 
the sprinklers run non-stop for about 50 minutes. By the way, sprinklers don't have motors, they are propelled by the flow of water. Later in this video, we'll disassemble the machine to see what's inside. Trust me, it's not what you think. Now it stops, but not draining. The machine waits 10 minutes for all the water to drip down. The third stage also runs with hot water. It's basically to wash away the thin layer of grease from the previous step. 18 minutes later it stops again, waits 10 minutes and drains. Stage 4 is almost similar to stage 3, but this time we need to add a rinse aid, which is needed to reduce the surface tension of the water and avoid stains while drying. 5 minutes later it drains. And the final fifth stage has begun. Its job is to finally rinse the dishes which by this time are completely clean. For the remaining 15 minutes it ensures droplets are drained and the dishes dry out. Some machines can even auto unlock when finished. The washing cycle is over. All the glasses are spotlessly clear. The same thing with the tray. Plates are squeaking clean. But don't click away, I want to delve into its internal workings. Turn it on its side. First up, we pop open the maintenance hatch, detaching that leak sensor. And we've got access to the screws locking down the sprinkler. A couple of bolts twist off from the inside. And yep, our sprinkler is free. Next, we unscrew the salt reservoir. And surprise, dishwasher easily splits into two parts. So, water comes in through a tube with a valve at the end. When this valve opens, water flows in, travels down this tube here and heads straight to this plastic gadget, the heat exchanger. While one batch of water heats up and cleans the dishes, the dishwasher pumps in a second batch, sharing some of the heat. This smart move saves on electricity. From there, water ventures into the salt tank to soften and then fills the main reservoir. Beneath, a tube leads to the pump circulating the water through these openings. The heater is built right into the pump. There is just one thing I don't understand. This brown stuff next to the salt tank. Dishwasher carrier or something? Yeah. Like weird little bits. They seem wet but feel totally dry. I spent like 40 minutes googling. Turns out they're also for softening the water. Previously, I used to think dishwashers were like mega pressure washers. But turns out it's more about being slow and steady. Many people think dishwashers are really wasteful and hand washing is more cost effective. The manual says otherwise, 14 liters and 1.3 kilowatt hours per longest cycle. So let's compare. I washed a similar load by hand with a camera on the water and gas meters. And after a long, tiring session, it's time to crunch the numbers. And guess what? The dishwasher wins. It's saving both water and electricity. By the way, who says the dishwasher is only for dishes? In fact, it's a powerful machine, capable of cleaning anything.
And at the end of the video is a little trick I learned recently. My dream is to reach 1 million subscribers. Subscribe and the new videos will only get better.